Hello friends, this is me Anil Polsani. I'm your mainframe trainer. Welcome back guys. We are on the second video of our interview preparation. We are on the second part of this document. We already have one video on English on this interview question which is already uploaded. This is the second video. We are continuing the remaining uh, 6 to 10 questions here. This part guys in this Excel sheet. I would like to cover this part of the training part here. And again, I want to tell you one more time, do not go to interview only by this preparation. Along with that, you please prepare some good topics in the DB2, JSL and COBOL. You require CSCS, IMS as well. Okay, so do not go only with this document. This is just a kind of an understanding. If a question comes like this, how you need to answer. Just an example, guys. So let's see quickly, sixth point here, COBOL DB2 question. What is the load model mismatch error code? load model mismatch error code okay okay so i understand guys i assume again i'm also reading this question for first time i'm not uh, i did this for long time so i don't remember all these questions so i'll try to answer like you went for interview and suddenly somebody asked you a question and you are seeing this for first time so they are asking you about mismatch error code guys this is related to db2 okay in the db2 point of view it is said that it is said that your load model of your main COBOL DB2 program and the DVRM load timestamp mismatching uh, should be done. So in case if there is a mismatch, what kind of error will come? That is what the question meaning is. So the uh, answer is minus 818 from the textbook point of view. Why Anil, why you are telling it is textbook in the project will it not come? Not exactly guys, very rare to rare if it is a DB2C software glitch then you will be getting this mismatch kind of an issue. In the real world, if I talk about the real project point of view, if I am doing the production implementation, I'm not talking about development here, we are talking about implementation. Production implementation will be done by the version control tool. Manually, I will not involve. So some interview people will say that I did the compilation, forgot to do the bind process. That's why I got this 818 uh, kind of things. That is not a chance in the project. If I'm doing the change, if I'm in the working in the production change point of view, when I'm implementing my change, why I'll do silly mistakes, I'll be very careful, right? So in the intro, we will say that as per the textbook point of view, the load module or the DBRM time stamp mismatch error is minus 811. But practically, it's not going to be feasible to see in the project implementation will be done by this K version control tool. The package creation, plan creation also will be done by version control tool. But yes, Anil, have you not faced any issue in this case? I faced many issues in this system process as well. But the issue is mostly 805, plan or package not found, which is when implementation happens for certain reasons, authorization reason or some kind of setup reason, the package might have not bounded properly. So yes, you'll be getting 805 in the process. But we don't get in production case. Why? Once I move the changes, I will verify, right? I will not simply say that, okay, changes are completed, close the ticket and go home. I will not do that. Being a senior resource in mainframe, as an experienced resource in mainframe, I do my steps as per the process, but I also don't believe everything is working fine for me. So when I implement this, is completed. I'll check the load model timestamp. I will check the source code, did my comments, my change comments, my change code has been part of that implementation. If there is any JSL change, I'll go to the production JSL and see my changes are reflecting or not. If it is a bind package or plan, I'll run. In the project, we'll have some DB2 tools, guys. One of the tool name is RC Query. Okay, if you just want to tell in the entry, one of the tool what I used in last application is RC Query. Before that, I used a tool called Mastermind Tool. So using this admin uh, catalog tools, you can go and give the program name and check whether the program has a package. System will show you the package component. You just check the timestamp, whether it is latest timestamp. If you implement it today, the date should reflect, right? So in the project, guys, we will do very careful things. By any reason, okay, by any reason, the package timestamp is not reflecting today. What I will do, I'll contact the DBA. I say that implementation is completed, but my package or the plan is not properly set. So what shall I do? They will help us. If required, they do the manual bind as well if they have access. But you will not have any issue in the production run. You will not go and create a production issue there itself, right? 
So yes, for intro part, knowledge is important. So you will say minus 8.1a. Done. Answer. But please remember other knowledge always. If the newly defined field, second question guys, if the newly field has a null value, what need to be done? So basically, if it is defined has a null values, only defined values. So if I assume guys, if I assume that this is a already existing table and they have added a new column into that and they set as a, uh, some null values as the default. Now, in this case, if you want the values to be null, let it be, okay? You don't want to go and change anything to the existing records, but in future, you want to use it later. That's the case. So first of all, keep in mind that if this field has null, that means it is expecting null values and there is no not null constraint. There is no with default constraint on that. That means in such case, in your COBOL program, you need to use a null indicator to handle this column. Any new program that you are writing on this column, you need to do that. But the question is saying, if the question is changed, okay, the question says that Anil, I have to fill some data. Now, number of rows are important. If it is bulk in row, you need to write a one-time COBOL program or you can use a JSL update option, okay, using update query, you can do it. But preferred is COBOL DB2 program. Why not Anil this JCL part? Why not JCL? Because there will be commit issues. Auto commit issues will come when you're dealing with bulk data. The resource cannot be hold for such a long time. So you get minus 904. So you can go for a COBOL DB2 program. One time run. You can do guys. In project, not every program should run every time. Sometimes we do one time program runs, which is only to run one time to make your system stable. And then later other process can do. So what I would suggest is if the data is in bulk in case, one of the suggestion is to write a COBOL DB2 program in that update this column, commit every thousand records. That way you can do the one-time run, keep all the records to some space or some zeros or some yes or no indicator like that. If it is not like that, you can also use a load process as well. You can use a load process, but for that preparing the file will be required. Of course, that is also another way, but very clumsy way. The best way to bulk update a single new column is to preferably go to Pobal DB2 program. I did all this kind of request, guys. We already tried with JSL, it failed. We tried manual. Manually, you cannot do the update right in production. So it is not possible as well. So the one time run Pobal program will be best one where you can change and commit this column properly. But again, please remember, since this is a new column, which is having no nominal constraint, anytime you are using this column in your COBOL DB2 program, you must go with minus 305. Handling the minus 305 error, add a null indicator variable there. Now, what's the third question? Can we create a decalgen with a different name if only one program has changed and we don't want to take the burden of, yes. So this is like a copybook change, guys. This is like a copybook change since these questions are related, I assume. The question is a carry forward question. So they have added a new column and that will affect the decalgen copybook, right? Whenever you have a new column and you read decalgen, it so you create a copybook updated with a new column and that will cause a replicate pre-compilation of other programs. So the question is yes or no question. Should I create another decalgen copybook with a different name? and use that in my new program instead of changing the existing decalgen and creating a recompilation change. Yes, you can do this one, you can do this one, but as I told you in the video one also, we told you that who will know all these things in future? Today, you are creating two copy books for a table. Tomorrow, when I join the project, I will imagine one table, one copy book only, right? So how do I know? You will not come and tell me everything, right? In the KP sessions, you will not detail all these small things. So it is not preferred to have multiple copy books for a single table, but only for intro question point of view, you will say that, yes, we can do that, but this is not advisable. Our SME has to approve this kind of approach. Nice. Now, ninth question, what is deadlock minus 911? Now, see guys, uh, imagine, like a traffic jam, very school level example, school level example, like imagine like a traffic jam, guys, you won't move, I won't move. What happens? We both are quite opposite to each other. If either you will move, the traffic will clear, either I will move, the traffic will clear. Now, if you don't move, I don't move, what happens? Deadlock, right? 
that is the same thing happens in the db2 system what happens is sometimes same resource multiple resource or when it is accessed by multiple jobs there will be a deadlock created so job j1 or program p1 want to update table t1 but it is already occupied by another program p2 now you can wait program p1 can wait but what happens in here already program p1 is holding already program p1 is holding another table and that is causing deadlock for p2 so just cross connection between them now what the system will do here is okay how the, this deadlock error will start is in your db2 software guys there is a program named as deadlock detector in the db2 software only they created a program what is called as deadlock detector what this fellow will do is it will sleep for a long time every 10 minutes or 15 minutes time span or two or three minute time span it will wake up and it will check the whole db2 process all these process are intact or not it will check if it finds a traffic jam if it finds any deadlock what it does it will kick one of the program out okay program p1 program p2 is there right and again which one will be kicked off is based on the algorithm guys we cannot justify that whether p1 is important or p2 is important that algorithm is different so it will check the deadlock detector program will do an algorithm to see which one is old or which one is better to stay and other fellow it kick out when the program p2 is kicked out for that it will give minus 911 but the question is not about 911 the question is what you will do when you get 911 so now program p1 and p2 were having collide okay like a simple traffic jam again you and me both got on same road guys you are not moving i not moving some police came okay from police person came he beat me very bad and told that anil you move away when i move away that is my deadlock my minus 911 case i am the minus 911 case what you will do program p1 will simply pass away right so after you pass i'll go away so in the project when you get deadlocks you are in a support application you are a support role person you got a deadlock that means your program got kicked out some other program is running let it run you will not worry about that what you do is simply restart your job simply go and restart the job by that time all the deadlocks will be cleared up no need to worry the question is if the deadlock is coming again next day what you will do if you get the deadlock next day also what you do you will set a dependencies in the scheduler tool instead of running both together we will set a schedule we will put a traffic signal there that don't go together one after other you have to go like that in scheduler tool we will create a dependency saying that job j1 you must run job j2 will depend on you so in this case deadlock will be avoided by dependencies but again if it is happening regularly you do this change of dependency if it is happened only one time it's fine because sometimes the cycles will delay overlap may happen only one time so next day you won't come across this deadlock issue no need to worry so minus 911 deadlock a software program called deadlock detector will kick you out because you are making other system way so once you came out with minus 911 simply restart the job because by that time you came out other cycle already completed so when you are restarting the job you just need to run from the failed step if it is happening again and again simply add a dependency so that deadlock won't occur again very good last question for today guys for this video not today uh, can we use detergent with copy statement or can we code post variables in working storage section now there are two questions here okay tenth one has two questions here separate questions guys so the first question is saying that can we use decalgen with copy statement no we don't should not use it if you use you will not get any kind of successful part there as i told you in the first video guys pre-compilation process contains two different things one the db2 part one the cobalt part so if you use a copy statement for db2 variables it won't be present in the pre-compilation during pre-compilation Again, I would request guys without knowing pre-compilation, don't go to any interview. So in the pre-compilation process, there are videos guys, in our training videos only, we'll have pre-compilation process. Please see them as well. In pre-compilation process, first step is to create the DVRM. DVRM contains the query, query contains your post variables. Now, if you don't have these decal copy books variables in the pre-compilation time, the DBRM cannot be created. So all your DB2 variables must be present during pre-compilation. 
listen to me, one line, all the DB2 variables, what we call decal gens, must be present during pre-compilation step. So there are two options I'll tell you. One, use the exit SQL include statement because DB2 related queries will be expelled in the pre-compilation time only. All the DB2 related queries will be expanded during pre-compilation time. So if it is a DB2 related variable, what you do is first step, use exit SQL, first option, use exit SQL, include, okay, exit statement, include, like your SQL CA, add your tickle gen. Second option, and what? What is the second option? You don't need to use copybook. Copybooks are optional cases. Who told copybook is mandatory? No one, right? So the second question you see here, right? Can we code host variables in working storage section? Any decal variable, guys, will be in the working storage section, not in file section. But the question is, can I define directly in the program? Yes. Second option is, if you don't want to use a copybook concept or a decal gen concept, you can keep every single variable in the working storage section straight away in the program. So it will be available in pre-compilation, it will be available in compilation as well. Copybooks, decal gems are very much reasonable concepts. They are not mandatory. They are not mandatory. Without copy book also, we can write a program. Without decal gen also, we can write a program. What you need to do is define all the required variables in the program itself. Then system can use whenever it is required. If you are using copy book, the reason is reusable. Same code, I need it in program two. Same code, I need it in program three. So what we suggest is to take a copy book, take a decal gen, and then use them in all the programs. But it's not mandatory. So can we code host variables in working storage section? Yes, you can do that. No mistake in that. Can we use decal gen with copy book statements? No, copy statement is for COBOL. Include statement is for DB2. So once again, guys, these are the five more questions we covered. This is video two. You can join our live training as well, guys. Ping me for the new batch details, okay? See you then tomorrow for the next video. Thank you, guys.